The Law Biz Podcast will begin after a brief word from today's sponsor, Answering Legal. Visit AnsweringLegal.com to learn more about our 24-7 virtual receptionist team. Who doesn't want to be a successful attorney but still have that life? Having those lunch breaks, playing golf, going on vacation, Answering Legal allows you to. I really just don't have a need for a receptionist anymore. Sometimes we're in court or we're dealing with other clients. Because of Answering Legal, my partner and I are able to address any client concerns or any new clients immediately, and it's really increased our business. It's been amazing. I couldn't live without them, (laughs) really. Hey everyone, my name is Nick Worker. I'm the marketing director at Answering Legal. So for a few years now, I've hosted Answering Legal's Everything Except the Law podcast, and I'm excited to share that Everything Except the Law is no longer our company's sole podcast. In fact, this spring, we'll be launching a number of new podcast shows through the Answering Legal podcast network. I'll be hopping on the debut episodes of all our new shows to help our audience get to know our new hosts a bit. And today I have the privilege of welcoming you to the debut episode of the Law Biz podcast, which will be hosted by longtime lawyer coach Gary Mitchell. Gary joins me now. Welcome to the Answering Legal podcast family, Gary. Thank you so much, Nick. It's uh, always been good to work with you in the past, and I look forward to doing more of that in the future. Yeah, uh, this is something that I think we spoke about a while ago, and now it's uh, it's coming to fruition, and I'm, I'm very excited. Well, I'm very, I have to say I'm very pleased that Answering Legal is sponsoring this series and making it possible. So thank you to you guys. Awesome. I, I, I'm very happy that you're the first one, and uh, I couldn't be more proud. So I want to say, you've been working as a lawyer coach for a number of years. I want to start off today by hearing about your origins as a lawyer coach. How did you initially get started as a coach in this role? Okay, well, it, it's... Um... It's an interesting story. It goes back. I I knew a lot of lawyers uh, throughout my professional career um, through my involvement in politics. And um, then I found myself as a campaign manager for a lawyer coach running for parliament, which to the U.S. viewers is the equivalent of the House of Representatives. So this guy was green. I mean, total uh, intellectual, double masters, law and geology, blank canvas. And I helped him through the nomination stage. He won the nomination, which is like your primaries. And so then he wants me to be his campaign manager. And I'm like, no. (laughs) But I ended up taking, taking the role. And the most, the most amazing part of that role was coaching him, coaching him as a candidate, very similar skills to what lawyers need to grow their their law practice, you know, relationship building, soft skills, speaking. Uh, interacting, following up, um, all the nothing but the law kind of, uh, kind of skills. So we're going through this process and one day we go for, I, w- I went for coffee with his friend who happened to be a former lawyer. And he said, you know, Gary, I've seen what you've done, uh, with, with the candidate and it's been amazing to watch you and your ability to, to help highly intellectual people break down and understand and learn and, and absorb uh, soft skills, I think you need to take a look at the legal industry. And now we're going back um, 17, uh, 18 years, right? And I'm like, after I picked my jaw up off the ground, <laughs> I'm like thinking, what? The legal industry? They've been around forever. They need help with something. And so then I embarked on nine months of research, what was going on out there. Uh, I first reached out to a number of my lawyer contacts asked them questions. They made introductions to their management at their firms. Um, but then serendipity kicked in as well. The first chapter of the Legal Marketing Association outside of the United States was formed in Vancouver. And I went to the forming meeting, I met a number of people, including some top American legal marketers, uh, started to build relationships with them. Um, I'll try and keep this short, but it just fell into place. And then I found Within a few short months, I was being introduced to my first client, and that's how it happened, and I haven't looked back. I feel like that's always kind of the origin story is, um, you know, I worked really hard, but once once you find what you're doing that makes you happy, uh, I feel like 
for the person, especially when you look back, it just all sort of fell into place for you, you know? It did. It really, I mean, did, did I ever think I'd be a lawyer coach? Uh, no. <laughs> At the time that I got this job, I was in school to be an accountant. I'm not, I don't have the accounting personality, I don't think. No, I, I think the universe was on your side. <laughs> I agree. Uh, so what's your vision for the, for the Law Biz podcast? Like, what's our, what should our audience expect from your new show? What, what are you most excited to, like, I don't know, get into on the show? Okay. Well, the way I'm looking at it to start right? We're just starting out. So um, my vision to start out is that it's going to be another tool in the toolbox for lawyers who are serious about growing their practice or firm. It's going to be informational, informational, educational, and conversational. Um, it won't be just me. Um, I will have guests on a regular basis. Um, in fact, for every podcast, I've already lined up a number of clients um, I'm going to start out with clients because I'm truly excited to help share their inspirational stories so that lawyers can find out what's possible. Um, topic, we're going to cover everything. We're going to cover uh, mindset, practice management, um, um, business development, marketing, uh, leadership, HR, um, you know, and the audience is broad, right? We're dealing with lawyers from all backgrounds, all practice areas. So I'm going to stick to things that are pretty much across the board and, and any lawyer, again, that's, that wants to grow a law practice or firm um, will want to tune in. So I got to say very selfishly of me, I'm excited to watch your episodes because I like to, I, I, I myself participate in coaching classes. Like I get coaching um, and I find it extremely helpful, especially when it comes to mindset um, because I know that I am my own worst enemy, right? Like I am the person telling myself the things that nobody else is telling me, right? Like deadlines or tasks or like, I'm the only person making this stuff up in my head. Nobody else is putting these pressures on me. Well, you know what, Nick, you're not alone. <laughs> we all do it. It's a human trait. It's, it's, uh, you know, we'll say lawyer traits or lawyer this and lawyer that. I'm like, oftentimes I'll be on a call with my client. I go, are you human? <laughs> you look human um you know that's a very common thing we all do it i i had this conversation with uh with my wife recently because she so my mentor his wife is a is like a a coach for high-powered executives and so i've been doing coaching with her and it works out great for me because she is like in the process of getting another certification so i get free coaching and she gets um, you know, like, like I give, uh, time and, you know, she gets to record me and, uh, it's been so helpful because it, you don't even realize how tied up you are in your head. And so I think one of the things that you approach really well, but I don't really know how to articulate it. So I'm going to ask you is how do you articulate your, your approach to, to lawyer coaching? What are, what are some of the things that you do that differentiate you from other coaches in the industry? How would you describe your process in working with, with lawyers? Okay. That's a really good question. Um, and your personal story kind of leads very well into it. Over the years, uh, I've picked up more and more knowledge of what I call the lawyer mind and the lawyer mind. And I've, this is out there in articles and blog posts and, uh, other pod podcasts I've been a guest on is the lawyer mind, which is totally required to be a great lawyer is right, right side brain focused. So critical thinking, analytical, skeptical. I mean, this is all the reasons clients hire them. That's, what makes them a great lawyer? And I'm not alone in this. I remember being on a call with a senior partner of an international firm. And he says, why is it that all the skills and attributes that make for a great lawyer usually hold them back in business? And we kind of laugh because I'm like, yep. Yeah. So in a very non-judgmental way, I help them get off the couch and stop um, uh, binging Netflix with their left brain functions. <laughs> I've said that before, right? The right brain functions have been Olymp have had Olympic level training, right from law school through to articling, 
um, first year as an associate. I mean, it's just been all right brain focus. We all have two sides of brain. We all need them in day-to-day -day life. But I've really, especially in the last few years, I really focused in on helping them understand the way they think, right? Because oftentimes they don't understand or haven't thought about it. They're just doing, they're doing the work. They're focused on the work, which is great. Um, but they require those other, those other soft skills, like going back to that, that candidate. Um, brilliant, right? Really smart, intellectual. But my approach is really helping them first to understand uh, the different skills and attributes that come with those and then teach them. They are teachable. If the, if the candidate is open, the lawyer is open and they're, they're open to the coaching and teaching, they can learn. And because they're taught to learn all their lives, they learn pretty quick. That is my favorite thing about lawyers is, um, so when I entered like the legal profession, I'm not a, obviously I'm not a lawyer, but everybody, all the stereotypes are lawyers are stubborn and they're this and they're that. And it's not necessarily true because lawyers are so hungry for knowledge. And so if you, you have to spend a little time convincing them that they need what you're trying to give them. But once they're convinced of that, they'll run with it. You know, I like, like tech adoption, lawyers are already using AI more than, so, uh, it's Easter weekend. Uh, my aunt is a very high powered lawyer at some crazy firm. And she's already telling me all, she's like, Oh, are you on this new chat GPT? We're already using it. We're releasing it as a feature. We're doing that. And I was like, Oh my God, you're really like, you're actually doing it. Like, I know what you're talking about, but you're really using it. And, and, uh, and she's like, yeah, of course we are. And she told me a story of when she was a low level associate starting out, um, she worked at this really big corporate firm and she was telling me about the first time that a partner sent her an email to do research for him. And she was like, that's so impersonal. You're supposed to page me and I'm supposed to come running up three floors with my notepad and write everything down that you need. Like, how dare you email me? And now, nowadays, if you call me, I'm like, why are you calling me? Send me an email and I'll get to it. I've, I've heard similar stories about when they first adopted the fax machine. And then when they first had to give up the fax machine for email. We were talking about that. Like you come in to the office and all the little like bundled up scrolls are all over the floor because of the fax machine, the heat would you, like, I was like, yeah, I remember faxing stuff and you come in and there's a pile of junk paper on the floor and you got to figure out where, it, who knows? Thank God fax is no longer a thing. I got to say that. Um, so I've done my research. You're entering your 18th year as a lawyer coach. Um, and I'm sure during that time span, you've had some pretty memorable coaching wins. Um, can you tell us about some of your favorite accomplishments during your time as a lawyer coach? Okay. Well, I think there's two questions there, Nick. I think um, the wins, I'll start with the wins. My wins are client wins, obviously. When the client wins, that's a win for me. Um, I would have to say without a doubt, the biggest win um, is it took place in 2020. Um, it was the week just days before we went into lockdown, Monday. And I got an email from a lawyer and she was looking to get some coaching. So, and obviously she was very serious about getting coaching because we were on a consultation the next day. In that consultation, I learned that, now this is before lockdown, she had already made the decision and taken a leap from a boutique firm as a full partner owner uh, with no requirement to do any business development because of the nature of the workflow. And she decided to move to a national firm as a non-equity partner to start, right, um, with the mandate to grow her own practice and eventually the practice group. And the one sentence she said, I'm scared as hell, but I'm also very excited at the opportunity. And I thought to myself in that moment, wow, that's an entrepreneurial lawyer mind right there. She recognizes the fear, but she also recognizes a huge amount of opportunity. And like you said, lawyers are, they're, they're hungry for knowledge. So she was taking on the challenge. Lawyers do like to be challenged as well, right? Um, so I'm like, wow, like I'm, you've done this and this is before lockdown. So we began then lockdown. I mean, by the end of the week, uh, everything was shuttered. It was March 7th. 
And I was here in Puerto Vallarta and because I work here in the wintertime. And by the end of the week, Sunday, I'm flying home to, to Vancouver. And it was unbelievable. But we get we began to start working. And Nick, I've worked with lawyers before, helping them transition from one firm to another. That's hard enough when you're actually going into the office and building relationships with your new colleagues face to face, right? She's a newbie at a new firm with a huge mandate. And now all the tools were, that we were doing before, well, not all of them, but a great deal of them are gone. Add to that, uh, she's now forced to work from home, which she's never done. Add to that, she's a single mom and her girl, girls are now, her two girls are now at home with her. I'm like, wow. Well, as far as the transition coaching, we're both in new territory because I've never had to help a lawyer coach to build relationships um, virtually. But we did. We embarked on the coaching. And I'll just fast forward because there's a lot of a lot of details there. But fast forward three years. Um, she's already helped one associate she brought on from a previous firm become a partner. And she is now the national practice group leader. And literally, I'm looking at the calendar. That is three years and two weeks uh, later. Like, wow, that has to be. I mean, take COVID out of the picture for a minute and just go back to the leap that she took, right? From a comfy, comfortable a position where she knew everyone. There was no, like she, she was saying in the consultation, there was nothing wrong with the firm that she was at. But for some reason, there was something calling her. And she followed her in, intuition. She took the leap and it was such a pleasure to work with her. Uh, another one, another big win, a totally different situation comes to mind, working with a senior partner. Now, the, the last story that was the individual lawyer who reached out to me and, and hired me. This next case is where the firm reached out to me to work with a senior partner who had just come back from taking a medical leap. He had a really, really rough time. And my mandate was to help him get back on track, right? Uh, so I knew the background. I'd spoken to the managing partner and the director of professional development. And then I, of course, had a consultation with him. So I knew what I was going into. Um, but again, it goes back to the client, right? That hunger to improve, that hunger to take it to the next level. And we not only got him back on track, but we got him so far ahead within a year of where he's ever been. I know on, our, on one of our final calls, he said, Gary, I can't thank you enough. I'm truly doing only the things I want to do, the things I love. And I laughed and I said, yeah, because that's because you, you're delegating and you built a team around you. More importantly than that, he got a reputation within the firm as being the go-to partner to work with. All the associates wanted to work with him because he was engaging them not only in the work, but in the client relationships. He was taking them to events. He was truly making them a part of their team. And you know how associates talk. I told him when he started doing that, I said, client, um, you are going to see an amazing uh, few weeks ahead of you, a few months ahead of you, because once the word gets around, you're going to be able to build this amazing team. And so that's another huge win. Um, I love telling those stories. There's many more, but those to me, you know, Somebody taking a huge leap and somebody needing some help to get back and went and went far, far from where they were, far ahead from where they were. As far as my favorite accomplishment, well, you know, I've written three books. They've been published, uh, which is no feat. Again, if you asked me 20 years ago, if I'd be a lawyer coach and have three published books, I'd look at you like you had a drug problem. Um, but <laughs> sorry, but I would. Um, but I recently released a new app called the Law Practice Builder app. And this, I think, is my biggest accomplishment because it takes all the learning from 17 years, puts it into one app, A to Z, uh, everything you need to know about how to build a, a practice or firm. And it takes the, it puts the anonymity on the, on the table. Nobody needs to know you're getting help. Uh, you don't need to commit to an actual coaching program. You've got complete control of when you do it, how much time you take to go through it, uh, which modules you take first. Uh, I think, to my best of my knowledge, it's the only thing on the market right now. And um, so I think as, if you're serious, you don't want to do the one-to-one, -one, um, take a look at the Law Practice Builder. And for the larger firms, 
I think it could be a game changer when it comes to uh, associate training because they throw thousands of dollars away a year at group training and it doesn't work. It never has. It never will. I don't even do it. I won't do it. A uh, firm calls me up and say, we'll pay you oodles and oodles of money. Can you come and talk to our lawyers? No. It's a waste of my time and your money. So I'm really proud of that accomplishment. My wife works for a, uh, a very big company. I won't name the company. Um, they're listed on the NASDAQ, right? Uh, and one of the, her new... I don't know, call it ventures is training. She has to train all these people in all these departments because she really runs point for the marketing and advertising internally of this company. And I tell her, I'm like, why don't you just hold like group trainings and everybody joins? And she's like, nobody listens to those group training. They're useless. She trains. She'll take like two or three people on a department at a time. And I'm like, but that's so tough. She's like, trust me, it doesn't work. I've tried it. It doesn't work. No, it doesn't work. Well, especially with lawyers, they will not let their guard drop go out in a, in a group um, environment. I mean, I learned, I learned this really early on. I don't know if I ever told you, but the first time I was in front of a group of lawyers, uh, we, it was live and it was patched into two other cities. And I, I knew what I knew what I was talking about. Okay? I'd done my research. I'd had enough uh, experience in the, in the uh, field uh, with a number of different clients. So in the live uh, session, I didn't see an eyelash bat, let alone any kind of expression. Um, there was no interaction. There was nothing. I mean, I felt, by the time I got out of there, I felt sweat in my shoes. I get back to my office, and there's two emails from two young associates. Wow, thank you so much. That was the best um, workshop on business development I've ever attended. I'm like, what? <laughs> Uh, so I learned very early on, and then I've done a few in er earlier years. And the bottom line is, and I guess this may, I don't know because I've never done group training in non-legal industries, but especially with lawyers, they're not going to admit to their colleagues that they don't know something. And the other thing is you can't go deeper. I mean, the app, you can at least go deep enough in the circumstance and there's, you know, there's things to fill out and questionnaires and all that. It doesn't replace coaching. But I think it's a bridge. Um, I think it's a, be a much better uh, like form of, of, of training. And I recently heard people on, for generally speaking, online training, completion rate, it, this is across all industries. And you know, it's, I think it's a billion dollar industry now um, mm -hmm. throughout the world. Online completion rate is about 3%. So the other thing, the other thing I have to mention about the app is that, um, Having giving the complete control to the lawyer when they do it, which modules, which segments, like is it marketing first or is it mindset? Is it practice management or is it leadership? But the, they're all there and they can take as long as they want with it. And I know they like the control, but they also like to learn. So this is learning with a little guidance, a little guidance, and they still have complete control. I love it. Yeah, that's okay. My wife says the same thing. She says that people are too afraid to admit that they don't know something in front of their colleagues. And they also feel like they'll be judged by their colleagues for extending the meeting. They're like, oh, you're dragging it on. You're a teacher's pet, blah, blah, blah. But it's not true. Like people need help. People need to get trained on, on how to do certain things. So she has had to adopt this one at a time thing for like a, a very, very big company. And I, I applaud her, but I don't envy her. No, it's, it is time consuming, but you know the old adage, you get out of it what you put into it. That's right. So before we wrap up, I wanna check in with you about a few trending topics in the legal world. Um, obviously the emergence of AI, which I already mentioned before because I can't help but to mention it, it's way too prevalent right now. Um, what advice do you have for lawyers when it comes to keeping up with the new technology that continues to come out? Well, you brought up some really good examples. Uh, I have two, two th things on that. First of all, remain open, right? Don't be, don't be afraid of new technology because and just look at, you know, take your phone for, for, for an example. Look where smartphones were 10 years ago and where they are now, okay? Do you use a smartphone? Does it scare you? No. It's part of your body, in fact, right now, right? So 
my advice is be open to it. But here's another thing. It goes back to don't, you know, lawyers want to try and do all things uh, to all people. If technology is not your thing, okay, if you're a more senior lawyer, well, lean on one of your, your juniors. Lean on one of your associates. Have them become the expert on the technology and bring it into the team as a, as a group, right? Um, so remain open to it. But if, you, if it's just something you don't want to bother with or have time with for, um, then look to one of your juniors. Love that advice. Um, I want to ask you about hybrid and remote working because that's another, I'll call it a hot topic. Um, are you seeing a lot of lawyers that you work with making the transition to working from home pretty much on purpose? And, and what, what advice do you have for the lawyers who are making that transition or want to make that transition? Well, to be honest, I'm not seeing uh, a lot of lawyers making that transition. If they were doing it, they were, they were already doing it. Um, what I'm seeing, and it's very unfortunate, is um, firms mandating them coming back to the office. It just doesn't make any sense to me at all, right? Um, when it when this all thing happened, the first thing I thought of, and it's in the preface of my book, by the way, Growing a Law Practice During uh, COVID-19, was had COVID-19 not come around, there's no way law firms would have ever, ever, ever allowed lawyers and staff to work from home. So what ensued? They had to do the training on their own. They had to figure it out. The, the firm spent no money training their, their, their people on how to work from home, right? Stumbling through, mumbling through, okay, some, some tough patches, but they got through it and they learned how to do it. And what's more, they learned they were more productive at working from home, okay? And I've always maintained, what the hell is the need for this FaceTime stuff? As long as the work is getting done, the work is getting done on time, the clients are happy, does it matter where it's getting done from? So what I'm disappointed to see is a trend where firms are mandating their people to come back to work. What I'm also seeing is that, that lawyers are rebelling and they're saying, no, we don't want it. And so they're leaving. So here's yet another, another example of a law firm HR policy of one size fits all. You got to be in the box or you can't be here. I've always maintained throughout whatever uh, situation has been whatever challenge it's been when it comes to HR there is no one size fits all what's most important is getting the best talent keeping the best talent keeping them happy because it's all about the clients the clients don't care where the lawyers are working do they do, do they stay up at night and go is my lawyer at home right now working on my file no they don't care so why is the, the managing partner uh, up at night wondering why so I'm actually seeing the reverse trend, but you know, one of my first guests on the podcast is going to be a lawyer uh, that owns a small law firm who by the end of 21 completely went virtual because during COVID-19, during the lockdown and why I'm excited to have him as a guest, because he's a long time client. I've worked with this guy for a long time. He's also very entrepreneurial, but I remember doing, I wrote an article, so I interviewed him on this subject. He listened to his clients and he listened to his lawyers and everyone was telling him, we prefer to work from home. We prefer you to work from home and we don't have to go in on the highway and drive for 45 minutes or an hour into work, look for parking, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I'm excited to have, I don't want to give too much away because he's going to be one of my first guests, but I've, I've been writing a lot about it and I'm encouraging people to do it because I've been working from home since the very before I started this business <coughs> and working from home also allows me to work from Mexico in the winter. A number of my clients have worked in various places all throughout the world and depending on your practice area, obviously litigators, you've got to work around the, the court schedule and being in person. But even some of the litigator clients I've had over the years are working remotely. So working from home doesn't just mean at your home. It means from anywhere that you would like to work from. So I'm encouraging working from home. And the other thing, too, is, you know, this particular lawyer, lawyer sold his bricks and mortar and okay? no overhead. And to give you a little sneak preview of, of what, what's coming, he now is at the kitchen table having coffee with his wife at 830 in the morning instead of on the highway in major traffic. 
And they're both happy with that. <laughs> Can't argue with that. So we're going to conclude today before I pass you the, uh, the host hat. Uh, with some rapid fire questions so that our audience can get to know you, the real Gary Mitchell. Oh, the, the Gary Mitchell, not the coach. Not the coach. Uh, what's your go to late night snack? Popcorn. Interesting. Okay. Favorite leisure activity? Anything on the water. Recently, I went jet skiing. It was the most favorite thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> Love it. What? is your favorite thing about being a lawyer coach? Okay, that's easy. My favorite thing about working with a lawyer coach is working with a highly intelligent person who finally allows themselves to open up, take some advice, and then watch the major transformation that ensues. Without a doubt. That's my juice. That's why I get up in the morning. You got me beaming, man. Uh, what's the last TV show that you binged? There's been so many. Um, I'm still binging it. Yellowstone. Ooh, good one. What common lawyer mistake frustrates you the most? That's easy, too. Uh, trying to be all things to all people. Trying to do it all on your own. Whether solo practice or senior partner, that's the most common mistake. And I, that's out of the gate. I try and help them understand, you know what? You be the lawyer. You be the lawyer. And get people around you. Build a team. Take care of everything else. That's why that that's why that senior partner, by the way, said to me near the end of that mandate, he said, I'm only doing the things I truly love because he learned to delegate. This one is more telling than uh, than I think. Well, I, I at least for me, what's the last concert you went to? Well, it's been a while, right? Because I haven't been to anything since well before COVID. I'm pretty sure it was the Rolling Stones. Ooh, I'm kind of jealous. Well, I have to tell you, I was, I was unbelievably amazed with the energy of Mick Jagger. I could not believe this guy. Still doing it. Here's a good one. Why should lawyers take the time to listen to your new podcast? Well, not all lawyers should. Not all lawyers should. Um, if you're doing fine, if you don't want to get better or grow or do, um, do more or take more control of your life, have better balance, have better quality of life. Uh, have more fulfillment, have more freedom. Don't bother tuning in. I love you, Gary. But if you do want any of those things, then you should tune in. If you want to grow your practice or firm, then you should tune in. You're going to hear some amazing true stories, true stories with other lawyers. And um, I, ca I can't wait. And I'm really excited about this opportunity. Thank you so much, Nick. I can't wait to watch it because I know that a lot of what you're going to cover is going to be applicable for me. So selfishly, I'm going to get a lot out of it too. So it's a win-win for me. Um, so that's it for the, uh, the first episode of the Law Biz Podcast. Gary is taking over the hosting duties from here on out. So Gary, here's the hat. Thank you very much, Nick. I know I'll be watching. And uh, everyone, you can follow along with new episodes too on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and the Answering Legal YouTube channel. For more information about our podcast network, visit answerinlegal.com. And Gary, we'll see you next time, everyone. We'll see you. Have a great day, Nick. Thank you.